Azalea, welcome to Azalea's Kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make bolinhos de bacalhau, which are salt cod fish cakes. They're actually called little cakes, because bolinhos means little cakes. And they're something that you see them all over Portugal, and they're very traditional, very often seen um, first courses in restaurants or people's homes before the main course, in cafe food, snacks, picnics, that kind of thing. In the cafes, often badly made because often they have more potato than bacalhau, which is a salt cod, and therefore you don't get the lovely texture and flavour from the salt cod. So I'm going to show you a simple recipe of how to make it at home. Now there'll be a video I'll be doing soon about how to buy a good quality salt cod, you know, how it looks dried, how you soak it, how many days and all that kind of stuff. But for this video, it's a simple case of getting the salt cod ready preparing it for the fish cakes. What I would like to show you is this, which is that in um, Portuguese coffee shops that sell food or delis around London, there's, there's quite a few, um, you can buy in the freezer department the um, salt cod already um, soaked, so you don't have to soak it and it's frozen. And when it's this height, like that, it means that it's already been soaked. And when you defrost it, it basically looks the same as the frozen bit but as you can see you have a nice piece of chunky meat there now for bolinhos de bacalhau the best bit of salt cod to get is from the middle which is these parts as the tail end goes on the um, salt cod it's very bony and you get tiny bits of the actual um, meat of the fish and you, you don't want those bits because it's really hard work to get it's nice chunky um, fish parts. So this is the main um, central um, part of the fish and that's the one you're looking for. Now all you're simply doing is cooking it so you're boiling it and I'll show you very quickly how to do that and when it's boiled it looks almost like the raw one except it's cooked through and then you can flake it through and take the large bones out and the skin as well. I'm just, first of all I'm going to show you how to boil it straightforward. Okay, so now I've got the salt cod ready for cooking, pan with some water in it, simply put it in, doesn't need salt, and cover it, make sure it covers with water, and bring it to the boil, and then on the gentle boil, boil it for about, I normally it takes me about five to six minutes with a portion like this, but check after five minutes, see if it's done. Don't put a lid on it, otherwise it will boil over. Now, while the salt cod is getting on with um, cooking, I'm just going to get on with mashing the potatoes. So the potatoes, all I've done um, is to cut them into quarters, boil them, drain them, and I'll put them back into the pan and left them off the heat like this, and the residue from the heat of the pan will just finish off drying them off a bit. You want a dry potato. I'm going to, um, well, I'm going to rice them. So if you don't have a potato ricer, then do your best with a masher and if you're mashing them by hand they're like that with a masher then um, I would suggest to do it while the potatoes are warm because it'll be much easier try and get it as smooth as possible because you don't want to find lumps of potato in the fish cake you want it to be a nice smooth mixture so with this I'm just going to put them in just grab a spoon and get on with Now, uh, don't be tempted by putting the potatoes in the food processor and mashing it there because they'll go gloopy and you don't want that. I'll be using the food processor in a while to mince the cod once it's cooked and also the onions, so I'm just making a note of that. Don't put the potatoes in. done which is great and um, they're lovely and fluffy which is also great for this recipe I am going to put that aside and do the onions so normally um, I've always chopped the onions by hand very very finely a bit of patience to do that here what I'm going to do is finish them off in the food processor to get them really minced up the onions in the mixture in the middle of the fish cakes will essentially be steamed when you fry in them so you want them very very small in order for you not to bite into a raw onion, so that's why they have to be very small. I've cut them here quite smallish, 
but I'm going to now finish it off into fine minced up onion in the food processor. with this now what you don't want to do is mince them up so much that they go all wet and start to release too much onion juice so you end up with a wet mixture my eyes um, are feeling the, um, the onion in the air because uh, I can feel it stinging my eyes I'll be start crying in a minute now this is going to go onions going straight into the potato mixture Okay, so here we have the potatoes and the onions mixed in. I'm now going to put in the salt cod. As you can see, the salt cod is coming up to boil, so in a minute I'll turn down the heat and keep it on a soft boil for about five minutes. Okay, so while the cod is boiling away, I obviously cooked some earlier because it needs to be cold to handle and to debone it, and I wanted to show you what it looks like when it's cooked, and this is some prepared, already flaked. So once you get it, leave it to cool down, and then because you're getting the parts uh, from the middle of the cod, it's quite easy to see where the bones are and at the central bones, and you'll have bones on the edge, and they're quite large. As you can see here, um, if I lift a couple up, how big they are. And this is very good for spotting them and getting rid of them. So you just pick them out, um, and the central bone is very easy to take out, and then to grab the, the fish and flake it off like that, the nice big pieces. Okay, so now I am going to put the prepared cod flakes into the food processor. In the olden days, and I have this on a website, photographs of how you used to do it, which is that you would open up a tea towel and you put the cod into the middle of the tea towel and then you would gather the tea towel around the cod like this, in a bunch like that, and here's the part of the cod in there, and then you would, using the heels of your hands, you would press the mixture against um, a surface. And what you're doing by doing that action is shredding the, um, the fish. And also by shredding it really finely, you'll be able to find um, any little bones as well. So if you're interested in doing that, by all means do it. But, you know, life is a little bit short nowadays, at least it is with me. And food processors are fantastic. I'm going to put the cod flakes into the food processor and use a pulse action to shred it up. Okay, here we go. Now what, what you're looking for is for the mixture to be really nice and shredded. So this is lovely little bits. But for bolinos de bacalhau, you want a little bit finer. And now it's about the right texture for bolinos bacalhau, and that's when it almost looks like it, um, it's sort of little threads and clumps together. So this is about right now. Okay, so now the cod goes into the mixture with the potatoes and the onion. Okay, so the herb for bulling with bacalhau is um, parsley, fresh parsley. If you can get the fresh parsley that sometimes I see, I can't always guess it, which is a smaller leaf fresh um, parsley. It's a much stronger taste and I prefer it and it's much better for the bulling with bacalhau. The large leaf one that you very often see in the supermarket looks impressive but doesn't really taste very strong and for me it's second choice. So chop it up finely, add the chopped parsley in 
and you have to be very, very generous with the parsley because it's part of the flavour of the fish cakes is from the parsley. In fact, I'm going to add some more. I'm now going to remove the cod. It's been cooking away while I've been making the mixture, just so that you can see what it looks like when it's done. And as you saw, it was very quickly that it was cooked. And in fact, it's falling apart, so I'm taking it out. Salt cod is cooked, ready to use in so many things. Okay, so now we're ready to add the eggs to the mixture. So I have two eggs here for this amount of salt cod and onion and um, potato. But first, before you add the eggs, you have to beat them to loosen them a bit. The best thing to use to mix it all up is to use your hands and get it right in there. You may need to add one extra egg, but I always start with two and see how the mixture is. It shouldn't be too dry. You want it wet enough to clump together, but not wet uh, because you're frying it. Okay, the mixture looks like it's ready, so I'm going to get my hands right in there and Feel it and it should feel moist. There we go. Should feel sort of stiff enough to roll into balls if you wanted to, like that. So now it needs ready for resting in the fridge for at least an hour and you want to just cool it down a bit and firm up a little bit so that when you're shaping it, you're going to shape it into quenelles, that you can do that quite easily. Okay, so put it away for an hour. Now we're going to fry the Bollinger's Bacalao. So the first time you fry the, the first batch is always a test for the oil. Even if you get the oil at the temperature you're supposed to, sometimes you need to play around a little bit. Now I've worked out for the Bollinger's Bacalao if you get the oil to 170 Celsius and then the Bollinger's will bring the oil down once they're in the pan to about 160 Celsius, 155, it's about right to cook them so that they're nice and sort of golden colour on the outside and they will cook through the middle without burning because you don't want burnt ones because then you don't taste anything. So I'm going to, while that's warming up, I'm going to um, shape them and my mother is able to quenelle um, Bollinger's Bacalao very quickly, so she does it and puts it into the pan like this, but um, I'm a bit slow. So I take my time and therefore I put them, I make them ahead before frying so they're ready to go into the pan. Now for quenelling, it's quite easy, two spoons, just sort of soup spoons, and then you put the mixture between the spoons and you force it into a shape like this. And that's it. How neat you want it depends on how long you spend on it and there you go that's the first one so I'll carry on making some more I'm taking the temperature and it's coming up to a temperature of 170 um, Celsius so that's about right and I'm going to start putting them in and the reason, in case you wanted to know, I use a very small pan is because um, they don't use less oil. That's just, you know, a way of using less oil. It means I don't have to worry about getting rid of too much oil at the end. So I'm going to start popping them in, in this little pan that will take five. It should take about um, two minutes, two and a half minutes to three, kind of depends on the size. Although you want the shape to be quite thin and not too big because you don't want to take a long time to cook inside. So keep them quite thin-ish. Um, and now if you come back, you'll see them floating on top and gaining a little bit of colour. As you can see, they're gaining a little bit of colour and, 
another minute, a minute and a half, and this should be done. And now they're ready, so I'm taking them out. They've got a lovely golden colour. If you're unsure if they're done, once they're out, give it a few seconds, open it up, and inside should be hot and fluffy. And so they're done. And I'm just going to carry on cooking the, this next batch, and then I'll show you at the end what they look like inside. So here's some that I have been frying, as you can see, and this is something I did earlier, some I did earlier, and I wanted to show you what happens if you have the oil too hot and oil too cold. So obviously if it's too hot, you just get a burnt outside. It doesn't taste very nice. All you can taste is the burnt. Inside will be fine because it's all sort of still fluffy and moist, um, as you can see, but the taste of it wouldn't be very nice. If the oil is too cold, what you're going to get is that they break up end up splitting and so you end up with a sort of a, a greasier pulling your speckle out because the oil will penetrate inside and you don't want that so try and um, get the first batch right and then after that you'll figure it out to how to cook them perfectly now have a look inside a good one so an idea of a perfect for me pulling your speckle out cooked you know within a few hours and eating them while they're sort of at room temperature is that the outside there's a crispness and then inside they're soft and fluffy. So for me, that's just ultimately. And when you break them, they should be, um, you can see the steam coming out probably. They should be nice and moist and fluffy. So that's the balloon bacalao that I love. Balloons bacalao are one of my favorite things. And while I've been cooking them today, I've probably had about 12 so far. Uh, it's one of those things I can't stop eating. And actually, I eat them while my mum is cooking them. I think one of the pleasures is to go around her side when she's frying them, when she's not quite looking, and then taking one, eating it, burning the roof of your mouth, and then regretting it. But that's part of the memories for me. I hope you enjoy it and make something that's a little bit different if you've never made them before. And an experiment. Add a little bit of chilli, lemon peel, you know, lemon rind which is very nice, coriander, I've even gone as far as adding basil, which I know Portuguese will be like, what are you doing? This is not pulling this back out, but hey, experiment and try it. So I'll see you next time. All the recipes are in azaleaskitchen.net and take care. Bye.